Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to teach yourself mathematics from start to finish, starting with just like basic sets and proofs. So we'll start with actually learning to write uh, proofs and learning some logic and a little bit of discrete mathematics. And then from there, in theory, you could teach yourself tons of mathematics. And I'm going to show you the exact order that you should follow, or at least a highly recommended order. Let's get started right away. Okay, so here I have four books that I think are a really, really good starting point. So the first two are discrete math books, and the bottom two are actually proof writing books. So these are books that actually math majors would use. So let's go ahead and take a look at the first two. So this first book, um, I already did a review on actually just recently. It's Discrete Mathematics with Applications by Susanna Epp. This is an extremely good beginner book and you can get a used copy for a few dollars. This will let you get started with the theory of logic. So you'll learn about like logical implications, uh, truth tables, uh, all kinds of things regarding you know, basic mathematical logic. And the beautiful thing is you need zero algebra to learn this. Now, you will have to learn algebra at some point, and I'll show you later in the video, but you can start with this. You can start by learning like the core foundations of mathematics. It's really, really quite beautiful. This other book is just another book on discrete math that I have, and I have like, you know, 10 of these, but these two are really good for beginners, and that's what this video is about, right? You wanna get started and you want to learn. This is the book by Coleman, Busby, and Roz, and this is also a very, very beginner-friendly book on discrete math. So in discrete math, you learn all kinds of stuff, like logic, sets, and you learn how to write proofs. You also learn other more advanced topics that you typically don't see in other classes, like calculus and stuff like that. So you learn a lot of really cool math that oftentimes math majors don't even see. So it's a good place to start and a good place to keep you motivated uh, you know, to start at the beginning. Because you've probably done algebra in the past, maybe you were in school before, maybe you're in school now, and we just do so much algebra. So I think that this is a really good starting point for people. Discrete math, especially this book, the one by Epp, and the one by Coleman, Busby, and Ross is also pretty good. This one is better though. This is probably a really good choice. So here we have two proof writing books. This is Mathematical Proofs, A Transition to Advanced Mathematics. This is the Chartrand, Palomini, and Zhang book. This book is awesome. Now, this is way more advanced than the previous book. So, you know, you pick up these books, you read what you can, and you try to understand as much as you can, and then you move on to the next topic. You're not expected to master everything in any of these books, by the way. And this is another book on proof writing. This is the one by Bond and Keen. This one is also good, uh, but this one is better. And by the way, every book I'm showing so far here, you can probably get it for less than $10 on the internet if you get a used copy. So these books are good for math majors um, because they teach you to write proof. So this is, this is a big deal. You know, you go to college for four years to get a math degree, and one of the key things you come out with is learning how to write proofs. And these two little books basically teach you how to do that. So again, you're not expected to, you know, completely master everything in these books. So just make an effort. Why are there pre-algebra books in this video? Well, remember, this is from start to finish. So once you've attempted those books and you've learned some logic, and maybe that's all you've learned, Maybe your math is really bad, so maybe you need some pre-algebra. So these are just two pre-algebra books that I have that I like. This is the one, it says AGS. This one's good because it has solutions. And this is Fearon's pre-algebra. This one doesn't have solutions, but I actually like this one better than this one. So if you're just trying to like refresh really basic math, these are two pretty good pre-algebra books. I have about eight pre-algebra books, and I think these are maybe the best ones. So maybe you decide you don't need pre-algebra or you've already worked through it and you feel good enough about the material. Then college algebra is a good next choice. So college algebra uh, is a course where you learn just basic algebra. Uh, there is a course in between these called intermediate algebra. I decided to skip that one because most intermediate algebra books just contain like just thousands of problems and it's just too much. These books I think are better and they're better written. So this is the one by Kaufman. Um, it's a little bit more beginner friendly than this one. This is the one by Blitzer. I think both are good and both are worth having and you will learn all of the basic algebra skills that you need really to go further uh, in mathematics. 
once you get through college algebra or like you feel like you've mastered enough of the material from college algebra, you can jump into this. This book is typically used to teach a course called pre-calculus and also trigonometry uh, in the US. Pre-calculus is like algebra, it's like college algebra, but it's harder. So you do like more things. You do more things with inequalities, you do some stuff with matrices. It's just a little bit more challenging than algebra. So in theory, you could start with a book like this. This is the one by Hornsby, Lyle, and Roxwold. And this is good because it's the instructor's edition. So it actually has answers to every single problem uh, right next to the exercise, which is really convenient. And this book has everything, right? It's got conic sections, it's got matrices, it's got algebra stuff. Um, it's an awesome book. So again, this is the book, a Graphical Approach to Algebra and Trigonometry, and it's the one by Hornsby, Lyle, and Roxwold. And again, you could in theory skip all the pre-algebra books, skip all the college algebra books, and start here. So if you know some basic algebra, this is a good place to start. And we have finally arrived at Calculus. So the book on the bottom you see here is Calculus by James Stewart. This is a common book. It's probably the most popular book in the United States uh, that's used to teach calculus. And in Canada, uh, James Stewart was a Canadian uh, mathematician. He passed away several years ago. So this is a good book, this one, Calculus, for people who are going like into engineering or if you just want to learn just basic calculus. It's got tons of problems and tons of pretty good explanations. A, a lot of people don't really like this book, but it's hard to find a book uh, comparable to this one. Another good one is the book by Larson. So again, worth owning a copy of this book. You can get a used copy and typically, uh, in the US at least, the courses that are taught with this book are Calculus 1, 2, and 3. So you could use this book to teach yourself those things. So what about this other book? This is a famous book. This is called Calculus by Michael Spivak. And this has less material than the Stewart book, but it's more advanced. And the beautiful thing is, if you followed this video so far up to this point, you already know some logic and you already know some proof writing. And that is the number one thing that gets people hung up with this book. They'll, they'll pick up this book because they'll read about it on the internet, be like, oh, this book is so good. And they're like, I don't understand what's going on. What is Michael Spivak talking about? It's because those people lack the proof writing skills, which we covered at the beginning of the video. So if you jump into this, and you follow this order, you'll actually be able to read a book like Michael Spivak's Calculus. And you'll understand the trig that's in here because you've learned some trig. So awesome book, worth owning, especially if, if you know some, some sets and some proofs. Once you get through calculus, it's time to learn some differential equations, which are super awesome. Uh, the main thing for learning differential equations is that you know some integration. So if you go through a book like the Stewart book and you pick up like all the integration techniques, that will help you a lot in a course like this. So this is the book that I use to teach differential equations. So I'm biased. This is the one by Zill. It's an okay read. This one is a bit easier. This is the one by uh, Larry Andrews. Not a very popular book, uh, but it's pretty good for beginners. It's called Ordinary Differential Equations uh, by Larry Andrews. So again, differential equations is a good uh, next uh, place to be. There's many more books. I just, I'm trying to keep this video short. So uh, here's two good ones. Okay, so now you know how to write really basic proofs, you know some basic logic, and you know a little bit of calculus. And again, you don't have to be a master to jump into this stuff. So now it's time for linear algebra. So this is the book by Howard Anton, Elementary Linear Algebra. I like this book for beginners because it's very consistent with what you would learn in a college level course. The exercises are very similar to like the test questions you would see in a college level course. It's really, really good for beginners. It goes along very very well with what's taught, so that'll help you get an A in your class. This one is a much harder book, it's a drier book, it's a much more rigorous book, but it is still worth owning. It is the one by Friedberg, Insel, and Spence. And this one is proof-based, but remember, you have proof writing experience, even just a little bit, because that's where you started. So both books are worth owning. And again, you would just try to learn as much linear algebra as you can in this next step. You don't have to master it before going to the next step. Let's keep going.
At this point, it's like the world is open because you know how to write basic proofs, you've made it through some calculus, and you know some basic linear algebra. So now, in theory, you can learn almost any math subject that's taught at the undergrad level. So this is a book on mathematical statistics. So if you're interested in statistics, this is a really solid choice. And this is an advanced book, but you know what? It's okay. You're at an advanced stage. You know calculus, and this book requires calculus for some portions. This one also requires a little bit of calculus for some portions portions, and it's called a first course in probability. But again, a lot of this stuff can be done without calculus, but the fact that you know it will let you get through, you know, giant portions of these books. A very fun transition might be to jump into complex variables or complex analysis. That's basically calculus with complex numbers. So in theory, you could actually skip differential equations and jump into this. Although, I think it's better to learn differential equations first. Uh, it's, it's fun. It's worth it. But this, again, if you want to jump into this, once you know some calculus, you can just jump into this. So, And you already know some if you're at this point. So this is the book by Saf and Snyder, and this is the book by Brown and Churchill. Both are pretty much the same. They're both excellent beginner books in the study of complex variables. Real analysis is often considered the bane of math majors. This is probably one of the hardest, if not the hardest, class math majors take. You can actually learn that now if you're self-studying. So again, you can just jump into this after uh, linear algebra. Uh, this is the book by Terence Tao. This is Analysis 1 and Analysis 2. Really good uh, for reading. Uh, really good examples in these books. Extremely enlightening. Much more readable and much more interesting than these other two books. However, these other two books are a little more standard, and they're still recommended. This is the one by Fitzpatrick. Uh, it's really good for beginners uh, who are trying to learn advanced calculus. And this is the classic book uh, by Rudin. It's called Baby Rudin. That's the nickname it has, and it's Principles of Mathematical Analysis. So any of these books would be uh, good choices for beginning to learn some real analysis. One more, sorry, I forgot. This is Elementary Analysis, The Theory of Calculus by Ross. This one is very special because he spends a great deal of time going into the proof. So again, another solid choice for uh, advanced calculus, aka uh, real analysis. Another possibility that you could jump into now is abstract algebra. So abstract algebra is like the study of groups, rings, and fields. So you look at like a set with some like basic properties, and it's really proof-based. So linear algebra is a good course to take uh, before these because these are very, very proof-based courses. This is my favorite beginner book on the subject. It's the one by Saracino, and this is the book uh, by Galleon, another good uh, beginner book for abstract algebra. Okay, let's look at a couple more subjects that you can actually learn now. So topology, I just picked a book I have on topology. This one has full solutions to all of the problems. This is the one by Gamelin and Green. It's a great book, and it's a Dover book, so that means it's cheap. It's only a few dollars on Amazon. Let's see what's below it. This is a book on combinatorics. This is the one by Alan Tucker. This is an okay book. The good news is you will know some combinatorics because you started with those discrete math books. So a lot of what's in this book will be review. So even though this is a little bit more advanced book, you have some background in it because you started with this stuff. That makes it awesome. What's below it? <sighs> Naive set theory. So this is something that could have been studied, you know, even near linear algebra. Set theory is not a very difficult subject. This is the classic book by Paul Halmos, who passed away uh, several years ago. Uh, this is a very famous book. It's a little book. Um, it's, it's quite enjoyable. Again, it's Naive Set Theory by Paul Halmos. This is a book on functional analysis. And yes, in theory, um, you could learn this stuff. You already know some advanced calculus, aka real analysis. You know how to write proofs. This is probably the easiest book on the subject. It's the Kreisig book on functional analysis. And what's below this? A book on graph theory. This is the book by Ronald Gould. And again, you might already know some graph theory because you started with, with that discrete math. That's why I think it's such a good starting point. And that's why I picked this order uh, for this video. Let's look at some more stuff. If you really want to get into the higher level math, you could, you could do it. <laughs> so here we have two famous books. This is the one uh, called Real Analysis by Royden. And this is a book on basically measure theory. This is graduate level mathematics, really hard stuff. And this is the classic book nicknamed Papa Rudin by Rudin. It's called Real and Complex Analysis. And this is the book by Rudin. Both of these can be uh, 
gotten quite inexpensively perhaps. I know the Royden book isn't so much money. Uh, this one might have appreciated over the years. Uh, you know, it's, it's kind of a cult classic. But so is Royden, and I think Royden is a little bit better. So both are good books for attempting to teach yourself uh, some graduate level math. Let's take a look at some more books. So these are just books that I left out of the video that I had at the beginning in the video in, in the first uh, scene. So let's just talk about them. So this is one on linear algebra. This is the one by Serge Lang. And this could have been another choice uh, for learning linear algebra. I love this book. It's an excellent book. And you can get it very inexpensively. I, one of my favorite. Linear Algebra by Serge Lang. What's below it? Ah, Linear Algebra by Hoffman and Kunz. This is a classic. Uh, this is a book that was used at MIT, I believe, in the 60s. This is more like the Friedberg book. It's a proof-based uh, linear algebra book. This next one is Algebra by Michael Artin. So this is a great book uh, on algebra. It takes a linear algebra-centric approach to abstract algebra. So this is an abstract algebra book with an emphasis on linear algebra. What is this book? This is Calculus Made Easy by Thompson. This is a book you read when you're laying in bed. Um, I should have mentioned this one before, but this one's worth picking up. This is an old book uh, written, I think over, uh, it's written a long time ago, I think from the 1900s, early 1900s. And um, yeah, this is an awesome book uh, for calculus and for understanding calculus. So you don't want to use this by itself to learn calculus. You kind of want to use the other book I recommended and then like lay in bed and read this one. This will give you some more intuition. Here we have a geometry book. That's right, I had nothing in this video about geometry. So I thought I should include a book. This is just a basic book on geometry and this is the one by Jurgensen, Brown, and King. So uh, just really, really basic uh, geometry. You can learn this at any point independently of any of the other topics. Here we have another book by Paul Halmos. This is his linear algebra book. It's called Finite Dimensional Vector Spaces. And this is something, again, that you can use to learn linear algebra when you decide to jump to that stage. And then another book on linear algebra. This is the Shams. Again, just another resource to have. And then another book on linear algebra. <laughs> this is the one by Gilbert Strang. That's the guy who has the uh, MIT lectures. And I think they're on YouTube also. Really cool, really cool guy. So those are the suggested ways of teaching yourself mathematics from start to finish. And again, you don't have to follow this particular order. And also keep in mind when you're trying to teach yourself math, that math is hard and you're going to get stuck. Um, you might not understand everything uh, and that's normal and that's okay and that's expected. So say you're learning calculus and there's just some stuff you don't get. It's okay. Feel free to move on and explore your interest, right? This video is about teaching yourself math. It's about learning for the sake of learning and you know, enriching your, your mathematical knowledge. So I think it's the best way to do it. You, know, you read what you enjoy. Read what you want to read. You know, if you're taking a class on linear algebra, you don't want to study linear algebra. You want to study something else. It's like this human nature thing. We always want to study what we don't have to study. And so by teaching yourself, you kind of get to explore what you really enjoy and what you really like in mathematics. And hopefully this video has shown you all the different types of math that are out there that you can actually learn on your own. Good luck and take care.